and suffering in this country because more than 50% of our discretionary budget every year is thrown at the Pentagon for weapons that don't work, for idiotic wars that make us less safe. I am not proud to have been part of the machine that created dead people, occupied people, oppressed people around the world and here in the U.S. We have to destroy the U.S. military system. We have the coffins behind us to recognize that the post, one of many perhaps, but one of the most significant, has been one of the premier entities that has pushed this unbelievable war propaganda, not just around Ukraine, but on almost every issue, certainly around the issue of Iraq. Now, of course, the New York Times gets the worst sort of history there, but the Washington Post was right along with them. Many, the Pentagon Post has been determined. Not to mention, this is one of the primary voices for gentrification and police terrorism in all of Washington, D.C. Anytime the police in Washington, D.C. want to bring the war right here at home to oppress working class black communities, no matter what the justification they offer, the Post makes sure that they echo it. We've just seen recently how the Post has been complicit in a two-year-long campaign to promote an unbelievable U.S.-backed war inside of northern Ethiopia and Eritrea. They told lies then. They've told lies about Ukraine. They've told lies about Iraq. They've told lies about Palestine. Now, I'm sure if they came out here, they tried to say, well, hey, we told the truth a few times, too. But that's just a cover to make it easier to promote an agenda of war, an agenda of imperialism, an agenda of racism, an agenda of gentrification right here in Washington, D.C. The whole editorial board lives in Maryland, but they want to tell people in D.C. how to live. When you look at these right-wingers and racists in Congress who just overrid the laws here in Washington, D.C. to say that you can't have the laws you want, the Washington Post backed them. So whether it's the war at home, or the war abroad, you can count on the Washington Post to be a warmonger and to be a liar and to look for every possible reason to tell you something other than the truth. So we're here to let them know that whether they cover it or not, whether they write about it or not, 
We're not going to stop struggling. We're not going to stop pushing. We're not going to stop fighting. That's exactly why we have our own independent media. You can see many of the journalists who are gathered here today because we're not going to wait on the stenographers of empire to tell our stories. We're going to tell our own stories, including this huge crowd that you see out here today. A crowd that many people came out here. So when they say this was just a crowd of people out here apologizing for some other country, we're going to tell the real story that we're out here standing up for the people of every country that are under the boot of this U.S. military war machine. So we say fund people's needs, not the war machine. No to a proxy war in Ukraine now. Remember Iraq, no more Iraqs. We are against the unbelievable interventions happening all across the African continent, the drone war in Niger and all across the Sahel. We're going to stand up to militarism, stand up to the military industrial complex, stand up to the war machine and keep fighting. Are you with us? Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. Are we going to keep fighting? Yeah. Well, let's keep our job. Money for jobs and education. Money for jobs and yes. education. Not for war and occupation. Money for jobs and education. Not for war and